Today I want to show you a weekend challenge I was participating in. The challenge was to predict the severity of a car accident based on a historical record of UK car accident datasets, which is linked in the description. The approach that I am going to show you achieved the highest score in this two days competition. I expect you to be familiar with the data set. The database consisted of two data sets. One represented a unique accident, while the other represented a one-to-n relation of vehicle information involved in a unique accident. Most of the prediction models that I saw in the competition or online only considered the unique car accident data set and excluded the details about the involved passengers. Some other approaches made an inner join between the car accident data set and the vehicles, where only one vehicle information was considered for the prediction. In the case of an accident with four cars, the info about the other three vehicles is missing. Online research showed that there are no standard solutions for such a scenario. Here I set my biggest work focus on providing a unique prediction with specific end vehicle details. How can we do this? My idea was to find an overall score over all involved vehicles in one car accident. With three involved cars in an accident, every major role of the vehicle drivers should be considered in the prediction. Step 1, for this, I wanted to predict not the severity of an accident, and instead predict the severity of each vehicle involved. So we join on the vehicle data set. Step 2, in a multi-car accident, we make a cluster analysis over the involved vehicles and determine their severity potential. With low potential, the vehicle severity was set to zero. Step 3, train a model on the vehicle severity and predict for each vehicle the severity. Step 4, group by and sum the severity over the accident underscore id to get the original sample size back. Step 5, in this naive approach, each accident had a summed score of all involved vehicles. An accident id was classified as severe, as soon as the summed score was higher than 1. This translates to that in an accident with three vehicles, if one vehicle was classified as severe, the whole accident was classified as severe. So how did the data set merging process take place? At first, we concatenate the test set with the training set to enable a better feature engineering process. In the second step, we merge the vehicle data with the information of the accident information. This gives us to each vehicle the information on the car accident. Then follows the third step with the feature engineering job, later, we talk about the details of the features. The fourth and last step was to split the data set again into training, evaluation, and testing set. In case of multiple involved cars, we identify the role of a vehicle in the accident severity. This was done based on the cluster analysis, where cars with less factor for the severity were set to non-severe in the train and evaluation set. I will go quickly over this slide because it follows a common approach. The model training was tested with random forest, and the gradient boosted method. The results of the evaluation set were used to find better features. As soon as we had a properly trained model, the prediction followed for each vehicle. This gave us the severity prediction for all vehicles. Now we have all the vehicle predictions but initially wanted to predict the severity of a unique accident. The first step contained a group by over the accident ID and built a sum over all vehicle predictions. This reduces the sample size back to the original unique accidents. In the second step, did I take the original test set accident underscore id order and made a lookup on the aggregated overall score. If the lookup showed a score equal to 1 or higher, the accident was classified as severe. This was an experiment, which resulted in a surprising improvement of the results. For the feature engineering, I started by analyzing the dataset and finding correlations between the target and other features. This task can be more extensive with more time. Following were the results, first, I created a risk factor for each district, with the assumption that depending on the area the accident is happening, other risk probabilities are existing. A simple way is to take the sever to non-severe accidents for each district. The next step was to one hot encode categorical features with a few unique levels. An example were the weekdays. For the time encoding, the date format was reduced to the day and hour, where the hour was encoded in a cyclic continuous feature via a sin and cos representation. The same for the day over a monthly cycle. The age of a person and age of vehicle showed a skewed distribution and was log normalized for the models. NAN values were imputed or set to zero, as well as the numerical values normalized. The feature importance analysis showed that the local authority district risk factor was a significant predictor for severity. It is followed by the location with long and latitude. The sine cosine time encoding of the hour took third place. 
The age of the driver, as well as the engine capacity, are features that we receive based on the one-to-n data set join approach. While this was a nice outcome of the chosen approach, more improvements can be made. The first improvement would be to group the feature levels based on their frequency and severity correlation to reduce the feature space. Another improvement would be a more advanced feature elimination technique and make use of model ensembling to reduce method-based biases. Point 4, the long and latitude should be clustered in a more representative way. This could be done with the DBSCAN clustering method. A more sophisticated improvement could be to get the coordinates of the accidents and evaluate via satellite images for specific features of the environment, like dangerous crossings. As the second last step, information about local events could help to find patterns between driver behaviors and high traffic occurrences. And as the last step, the sun angle at the specific time of the day could be used in connection with the driveway of the driver. A correlation between blinding and car accident could be found. Possible use cases could include the historical analysis of dangerous locations, which could help governments to improve their urban environment. Another use case could build around the emergency services for accidents, which can be based on the environment data and car involvement, the dispatching process could be improved. The here presented last scenario could contain environment, driver, car, and route information to proactively warn the driver about the situation where they should take care or be cautious. This builds the end of the demonstration. To be at a point of sharing this video with you has a history of others sharing their knowledge with me. Be a part of this life cycle, you are important. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, or share your feedback and thoughts in the comments. Let's stay together, curious. Thank you for watching.